Hey guys, it's Margaret and I'm here to do another reseller Q&A video. Um, these are questions that I've compiled from my different videos where people have asked questions in the comment section <clears throat> and then also in the Facebook group as well. When I share that I'm going to do this, I'll ask for more questions. So I am going to start with the Facebook questions. I got four um, from posting yesterday that I was going to be doing this Q&A. So if you're here, hello, hello and welcome. Pardon me while I cough for a moment. <coughs> so I'm going to start with Caroline Matthews' question in the group. I, I've got this question from a few of my YouTuber friends. <laughs> she, uh, Caroline says, I'm in awe of your video output. I'd love to know how much time you spend a week working on YouTube in terms of planning, filming, editing, publishing, and marketing. So uh, as far as the amount of time, I would say for sure, in this last spring, it was a lot more um, because I had a lot more time to do it. During the summer, for sure, it, it was, it's not quite as much. But I would say, let's see, let me look at it more specifically. Planning, if it's just like haul videos or sales or things like that, it doesn't take a long time because it's um, all, you know, if I already have all the stuff there, um, I might open up a few tabs like I would do whenever I, um, I'm doing my research for the items anyway, let's say for a haul video. So it might take about 10 minutes to prep for that. But I gotta be honest, once I started doing my haul videos live, it made the time it takes to do those videos a lot uh, shorter because I don't have to edit them. Which is one of the reasons I decided to do this Q&A live because I won't have to go back later and edit it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where most of the time comes in um, when it comes to YouTube videos is is going back and editing them I've got 11 people watching now hello Lindsay hello Mary Lou I'm not sure I'm saying I think I've, we've had this conversation hey Joni how are you so yeah as far as that um, I would say an hour a day maybe maybe less depending on the day and then um, planning like if I'm making a tutorial video, I think I actually made a video about this. When I'm making a like informational video that I really want to make sure that people are not listening to me being goofy, but really I have good information. To I will plan. I I think about it for a week. Like I have you know a little notebook where I'll write down my ideas, and then throughout the week, you know, I'll, I'll jot notes about it, or I'll keep keep track of of um, what I want to talk about and try to get my brain set. So um, that's kind of how I do that when it's more informational or a tutorial. So that's for that. And then the marketing is, <laughs> I guess that's the sharing. Right after I, I click upload on my videos, there's a little a bar that pops up. It says share and I'll just go click, you know, Twitter, you know, Pinterest. And then I'll, I'll share more in the um, Facebook group where I'll write a little blurb about, you know, come over and look at the video and all that. Got some more people. Hello, 14 people. And ho hello, Sid Lay and Samantha Bustamante and Art. Hello from Florida. How are you? Hello. All right, so the next question from the Facebook group, and this is um, from International League of Thrifters. Does, it, does the video look normal to you? Because it looks all like kind of choppy to me. Let me know in the chat if it, if it looks normal or if it's being weird. I don't know. Tony Ferreira Quinn asked, Etsy versus eBay, which is worth, uh, which is more worth the time? I would say if you are going to pick between one or the other, probably eBay. But as most of you know, I cross post almost everything on eBay and Etsy. So it's hard for me to choose because there are months, especially in the fourth quarter, where Etsy outsells eBay. Oh, good. It looks good. Hello, Yvonne. Flip it easy. Um, so it's hard. It would be hard for me to choose on that because I'm I'm a lover of both, but but they both do have qualities. And I'm actually planning a, a video series. It's like a eBay versus Etsy, you know, and talking about you know eBay and Etsy if they were going head to head as far as shipping, you know, who would win? What are the you know aspects of both? eBay versus Etsy as far as fees, who would win, you know? So I'm, I'm looking at doing a video video series kind of like that, maybe tackling three of those chunks in each one so people can get a better idea of, you know, which way they want to go. All right, Christine Ray asked a question. Types of items that sell well on Etsy and not as well or for less on eBay, question mark. For example, I'm not having much luck with my vintage wrapping paper on eBay. 
well, I mean, that's, that's a tricky one because since I cross post everything, I find that it generally, I generally sell about the same amount on my wrapping paper on both. Whenever I'm selling wrapping paper, I used to price higher on Etsy because I didn't think people would pay it on eBay, but I've started pricing high on eBay as well and just putting that best offer feature on there. And every now and then, because I run sales in my eBay shop, I think it's happened maybe twice in however many years I've been selling, where somebody will send me a message and find my item on both sites and say, why is it cheaper on this one and not on this one? And I'll, you know, honor whichever is the lower price. But, but usually, I don't know. I think because I cross post, I haven't noticed, you know, certain things selling better. I would, you would think more vintage stuff would sell better on Etsy, but it's not always true. Um, okay. Hey, hey, Sunny AZ Picker and hey, Jean Pawson, how are you? All right. So also, I'm not sure I really <laughs> gave a satisfactory answer on that because I can't really pick because I cross post. All right, Carrie Young has a question. Pardon me. She says, I would love to sell on Etsy too. I just don't know how to fit it all in with selling on eBay and Amazon FBA. How do you manage to sell on all three platforms and how do you allocate your time? So for the moment, um, Amazon has taken a little bit of a back seat. I have things to send in, but I just haven't. Usually when I'm on it, I have like a day or I'll think about my week and think about what day or what afternoon can I really dedicate to Amazon because I'm not as heavy into it as some of the other um, sellers are. And then as far as eBay and Etsy, when I started cross-posting, um, okay, so when I started, I had about 300 items on Etsy that I wanted to put on eBay, or is it vice versa, I can't remember now. Um, but it took time for me to front load that. So I would do about 10 items a day, where I would kind of copy and paste, there's no, program that I found. If I knew how to write programs, I'd be a bazillionaire by creating this one. But there's no program I found that will copy the listings over to eBay or vice versa to Etsy. So I did it by hand. And then now that I'm all caught up and I had all the, the listings on both sites, just as soon as I list an item on Etsy, I copy and paste it over onto eBay. Um, I find it, I know there's a question later, which one do I do first? When I list items, I list it on Etsy first because I it takes me longer to list something on Etsy because where eBay has started really needing those item specifics in there, Etsy has something at the bottom called tags, which are for search engine optimization, and it takes a little bit longer for me to get the tags in there um, that would be relevant for my item, and I make sure I use them because that's how people find your stuff. Um, so as soon as I do that, you know, I copy the body of what I wrote and take it over to eBay and put it over there. So those are my F my questions from the Facebook group. Let's see in the chat what's going on. Uh, hello, Jean. Oh, I said hello already. And hello, Leslie. Uh, she says she's been thinking about posting on Etsy too. Hello, Julie, Thrifty Paper Garden. Okay, so now the questions that I've compiled from different um, YouTube videos. Pardon me again. <coughs> <clears throat> All right, Kelly's got a, kind of a bunch of questions in one, so I'm going to go through hers. Kelly asks, um, how long did it take you to start selling on Etsy, and did iLot have something to do with that? Um, but as far as you, how long did it take you to get noticed? I've been contemplating opening a shop, and I, uh, I can't afford FBA right now. It can be. Um, also, how long does it take to list one item on Etsy versus on eBay? I've heard you say you cross post. Which do you do first? Okay, there's that question. Uh, I've been selling on eBay for almost four years. Just opened a store. And then the next question I'll get to in a second. Okay, oh, it froze. Can you see me? Okay, good, good. All right, so how long did it take to start selling on Etsy? Well, I started on Etsy before eBay. So um, I would say it's similar to eBay where the more you list, the more you sell. But for sure, when I first started on, on Etsy, I was really active on, they have teams and um, treasuries and things like that on Etsy. So I was really active in those to build up my followers um, for my shop and people to favorite my items to get my things bumped up in the search. So, I mean, it was slow when I first started. I was still teaching at the time and I would say I would get, you know, a sale 
a couple sales a week, which was okay because I was still working full time. But the, but it was the more you start listing, just like with eBay, the more you'll see your sales picking up. Um, and then she asked if iLot had iLot is International League of Thrifters, which is our Facebook group. Um, no, it didn't it didn't exist at the time. And honestly, then when I first started, I didn't even know about groups. I didn't know about people on YouTube. I mean, I was just sort of a babe in the woods and slowly started finding out about other people in groups that, that did this. Um, let's see, as far, how long did you take, how long did, so I would say it took, you know, I can't remember exactly when my first sale was, but I would say once, you know, I, I only listed a couple things a day too, so, I mean, maybe a week, a sale a week, and then slowly as I got more items listed, two, three, and then it started picking up um, like that. So how long does it take to list one item on Etsy versus on eBay? I haven't sat down and like timed it, but I think I will when I do that head to head against Etsy and eBay, excuse me. Boys, are we fighting? Thank you. Better not. Thank you, sorry, we are live. <laughs> the boys are having their, their little video game time at the moment. So um, I think I'll do that because it, I think it takes a little bit longer on Etsy because of the item specifics. Um, not the item specifics that's on eBay, but the because of the tags, um, and I w because I want to make sure that my tags are relevant to my item. Uh, so okay, next. Um, so I list Etsy first, which she's asking, which did I cross post? And then she asks, Kelly asks, is it safe to put your story name on YouTube? That I have a big question mark about um, because of trolls and um, I. I have a very good account. I don't need to start getting negatives because of them. Um, I do. I mean, uh, I'm Texas Gal Treasures everywhere. So if somebody's going to mess with me, they're going to find me. I'm Texas Gal Treasures on Etsy and eBay and YouTube and Facebook and just everywhere, you know. And I haven't had any problems yet. So hopefully I won't. Um, but yeah, there are people that have had problems. But I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't had a problem with it yet. So, all right, let's see who's in the. Hey, King Flip. Hey, Yvonne, Flipping Tools. King Flip says, where's she getting these questions? So, I, ha I, I have questions that I've compiled from all like different YouTube videos. Whenever someone asks a question um, in the comment section, I copy and paste it into I have a Google document that I just have a running list of questions. Um, so, anytime anyone asks me a question, I might answer them directly. But then I'll I'll come and save it for a, a question Q and A video as well. Yeah, and then I do have some Julie from the Facebook group. I asked in the Facebook group as well. Okay, so next question is from Penny Johnston. She asks, "What is iLot?" So iLot is our Facebook group, International League of Thrifters, and we are pushing three thousand members. So it's really exciting. And Sherry, one six seven four W asks, "Hang on, there's a clunking and bumping back there, boys." What's the dealio? Okay. Um, Sherry asks, hi Margaret, can you share the reason you left the antique booth? Yes, I can. <laughs> the reason I left the antique booth, um, as you guys know, I, or maybe you know, I don't know, I used to have a, a booth in an antique mall, and I was there for uh, maybe a year or two, and I kept trying to find ways to be profitable there, and you know, I, I moved to a very, happen in location which was right literally across from the cafe and I thought you know what if I this is my last ditch effort if I can't make it there I can't make it here I mean this antique mall was really big and it was in a, a bit of a rural area so I think that was part of the problem um, but it just wasn't it wasn't profitable for me I paid $125 and then I think it was 150 when I moved to that spot a month and then they took 10% off the top of whatever you sell as well so it, my goal is some months I would like, just let me make the rent, you know, sell enough to make the rent. And then I just thought, you know, I, I mean, I'm not doing this to make the rent. I'm doing this to make money for me. So, I mean, there were a few months where I was, you know, did really well. Some months I was upside down and I owed because I didn't sell enough. I mean, I think that it was just, there was so much competition in such a huge place and it not getting quite enough foot traffic. Yeah, for sure. Location, location, location. I had, I had the optimum. I mean, when I left, I had the probably one of the best spots in the antique mall. Unless I was just selling the junk nobody wanted, which is entirely possible as well. Because I think also the clientele was much like older ladies. 
and maybe I wasn't selling what they were looking for and they weren't picking up what I was putting down you know what I mean so I just had to decide you know that's it I had to I think Tanya still has her booth over there but she's got a nice small one and but she's doing okay she's she's got that thing packed to the gills um, but it looks good all right so next <clears throat> pardon me and then if you have questions in the chat um, I'll answer those as well oh 27 viewers hello all right Gina wants to know what is that one item in your whole thrifting history that made you the most money um, I'm curious I ask all the thrifting boys and girls this so I can find some inspiration honestly I'll tell you my two top ones my two top ones were both cufflinks as soon as I start talking they start bickering I don't know if y'all can hear them James stop taunting your brother uh, okay so the two items were both cufflinks so one of them was a cufflink set that I got at a garage sale it was a cufflink and tie tech 14 karat golden jade um, and this is early on in my when I first started I mean this is what really got me hooked on selling um, I was at this lady's you know she was cleaning out her mom's and dad's stuff and there was all this costume jewelry and I bought these for four dollars and yeah, and then I, I sold them to somebody in Germany for 400 bucks. And then just earlier this year, I got a pair of cufflinks at the local charity shop, which were, <clears throat> pardon me, the local charity shop, which were a dollar, and they ended up being gold as well. And they were worth probably 400 or more. Um, but I took them to the gold man and, got, and walked away with a little over $350 for those. So that was a really good. Okay, King Flip says... Uh, oh, look at you being organized. Good idea. Uh, let's be happy thrifter. That's why I stopped doing the antique mall, not making enough profit. But it was fun. It is true. It was fun. And then, and hey, and I just saw, I, I think I got your email. So you yes, messaged me, asked if I got your email. But I ha can't remember what your name is. I, I'm trying to match your username to your real name, email name. And King Flip, you said we can see them. Are you talking about the kids back there? Let me try to hide that a little more. That might be what you're talking about, but maybe not. Who knows? Okay, next up. Did I answer that question? Maybe. All right, so yeah, the cufflinks. That's why I'm a big pusher for men's accessories because, yeah, I, they sell and make nice money. And people frequently overlook them. Only some people say, not anymore now that you're making videos telling everybody, you're just killing the market. Right? Okay. All right. K S C H Margaret. Oh, this was about um, ways to make money, different uh, platforms to sell on, and one of them is a local garage sale site that I use. And she asked if I have problems with people not showing up for transaction on the local garage sale site. And I would say maybe it's happened a couple times, but I'm really diligent about communication. And when I meet somebody for the local garage sale site, I make sure that I. I message them when I'm about to leave to go and say, okay, I'm on my way. And if I don't hear back from them or if I haven't heard from them during that day, I won't go. So maybe I'm from one of them. But I mean, I try to communicate, you know, hey, make sure I'm going to let, we're going to talk about this. Make sure on the day of, I'm going to check in with you. Make sure you don't forget because I go and sit there for 20 minutes waiting for you. So that that's a rule. I did have one lady one time though. This is funny. So she didn't show up. <clears throat> And I sent her, you know, a message after, and this is before I started doing that. I sent her a message and said, hey, you know, I was there waiting for you. You didn't show up. And she was like, oh, you should have texted me. I was asleep. Why didn't you text me and wake me up? I was like, well, who's supposed to text me and wake me up? And then she was like, don't get so sleepy. Whoa. Okay. I, that's when, when grown-up people don't take responsibility for themselves. Come on. All right. So, yeah, after that, I think, was when I started making sure I am not going until I tick tock and... I can't think of words, so I'm texting with my hand. <laughs> All right, King Flip. Pardon me. <coughs> Are you working on a children's product or book or some other completely unrelated business in secret? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I have sent an application in to become an audible book reader. Does that count? I sent in, well, it's not even an application. You have to send in a, a sample of your reading, a certain like three minute long um, clip of you. So, and then the competition is really, really fierce, apparently. But that's something I'd like to do. 
and I, and I have, you know, I have children's book ideas from when I was a teacher. So, but no, not at the current moment. <laughs> Good question though. Okay. Pardon me. I'm going to take a drink of water. You can hear my voice getting scratchy again. Okay. Mimi Hall's, Mimi Hall's, pardon me, this is from an Amazon video. Um, she asked, so when you list books on Amazon, are you just ignoring the prices for one cent or 99 cents? I always see that, I always see that and it turns me off and I think, who on earth would buy my book for $10 when there's some book for a buck? Um, so yeah, I do ignore those. I, those are those penny sellers and I, because I sell on FBA, I think I did a video showing this like, when I use that the FBA app and I scan a book and those pop up, then I just select you know I'm Prime sellers or if it shows up on my laptop, you can you know so select Amazon Prime only. So it shows up the, what I consider my real competition I'm there, and, th and that's how I choose my price points. So let's see in the chat. I see some things popping up. Uh, through <laughs> Julie says yes, read to me. Uh, Tasha says I hope you get the Audible gig. I send back so many books because the narrator was awful. Oh, thanks. And King Flip says, yeah, she would kill it, the narrator. I, I love it. I love reading aloud, and I love audiobooks, and so we'll see. <laughs> Maybe I need to send them, them another sample. They haven't got back to me yet. Rude, Audible. Okay, next up. <laughs> D. Christ asks, pardon me, I'm going to cough again. <coughs> Which marketplace is easiest and best to get started on if you're a beginner, Amazon, eBay, or Etsy? And I would say, um, for a beginner, I would say eBay because I think you're going to see more traction more quickly. I'm starting on eBay. Um, Etsy is good, but it does take a little more time to get the, those sales rolling in. And then Amazon, it can be frustrating at first. I don't know if you saw AMC and Saves video from when she first started. And it can be frustrating because you feel like you're, you're front loading this with all, you know, you're spending money on product and then there's all these fees and then you're shipping it in, which could, takes a big chunk out of your cut, you know, so it takes, you know, that first month or two to start getting that, that ball rolling until you're one used to it and two, you're starting to see that profit and then that overtakes the um, money that it took to get started. So I would say, I mean, it's a little bit, yeah, I mean, that, that can be a bit of a harsh reality for people starting on Amazon but I, I really enjoy selling on Amazon so even though there's changes you right nobody likes change all right here we go how far am I into this how long have I been at it where does it say does it say where are we no no what are we at 20 something minutes okay I don't want to go too too long because my kids uh they don't get that much time on, on on computer games oh hey guys time to switch okay all right, Vita Dunning asks, um, great information on photographing mugs. I've been resisting making my own light box because of uh, I don't have a lot of storage space in my home and I hate clutter, but your collapsible tent is perfect. Where did you get it? I've never seen one before. So I got to say, before I bought my collapsible photography tent, I did try one of those DIY because there's all those like, do it yourself, make a photo tent, you know, photo thing out of a box and some whatever oh my gosh it looked like Frankenstein built this thing it was horrible I did the worst job on the planet so yeah I get where you're coming from um, I got mine on Amazon and I think I actually have a link to it in the description box below um, I got the I got a big one and it's like I can't even I don't know 36 inches I got a big one because I you know take pictures maybe it's not 36 inches Maybe it's 24, but I take pictures of you know some of my grandmother's dolls were 18 inch dolls so I didn't want to get one of those little bitty ones you know for small stuff because I might have a large vase or a large something else like board game that I take a picture of in there um, so I like it I know you you might be able to get it cheaper but I did get mine off Amazon I've been really really happy with it and then I see some more chat hello Darren you're showing 16 minutes okay good um, so sunny AZ picker says getting started again on eBay how do you keep from being discouraged um, I guess as far as sales goes, I just keep listing. It's like a little door. You just keep listing, just keep listing. Um, I did have somebody message me a while back, uh, maybe it was last week, saying, you know, I don't, I don't think it was you, but I think it was somebody else saying, hey, I, you know, what am I doing wrong? I need, I'm not getting that many sales, and and here's my shop. Take a look. And so I went and looked, and they had 45 items in their shop. 
And so I wrote them back and said, well, my suggestion is keep listing. One, I have 740 something listings in my shop and I'm getting maybe a sale a day because I'm not listing. So my biggest suggestion is keep listing, keep listing. Don't just put it up there and leave it and think, okay, I'm done. Somebody's going to buy it because I have almost, you know, pushing a thousand listings and if you're not active with it, it's just going to sit there. Um, I don't know why, but it works. When you're listing, your stuff shows up more. So that's my number one tip, which I forgot to mention, by the way, when I did that video yesterday about like how to drive more traffic to your site. And, and I thought about it too. I thought the last thing I'm going to do and the number one thing to bring more traffic to your listings in your shops on eBay and Etsy is to keep on listing. And I totally forgot to put that in. It happens, but for sure, that's that's the number one thing. Okay, let's see. Um, Drift, oh, Julie wants to know, do you get many returns on Amazon? I do. I mean, I've, not a lot. I would say, you know, a couple a month. Um, and I know some people get really upset by it and, like, send it back. I want to know why. And I, honestly, I just can't, I don't, I don't pay that much attention to it. Is that bad? It may be bad, but I just... I mean, I do the best I can. Now, if I get a bad review on something, I'll go look at that. Because I had one where somebody sent it back and were, they were mad because the dust jacket was destroyed in shipping. And they left a really horrible review. And so I talked to Amazon about that and they fixed it because it wasn't like that when I sent it in, you know. So as long as, I mean, as long as it's not really giving me a big bad ding, I don't spend a lot of money on the things I send up there. So I don't feel like, um, cause I don't do a lot of RA. So I know some people do RA and they spend quite a bit of money, you know, for it, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not the person to ask on that, that one, but yeah. Okay. Let's see. Tasha says I'm should make a new, good luck, Tasha, making that new light box. Cause mine looked like Frankenstein's dog ran over it. <laughs> it was bad. Uh, let's see. Darren, <clears throat> has a collapsible tent, but it's 16 by 16. I know. And <clears throat> sometimes I feel goofy popping up this big giant tent to take a picture of a mug or, or something like that. But when I have those big items, totally, totally uh, worth it. Let's see. My first light box is a cardboard sign from a valet at a, at a banquet. Oh, <laughs> okay. Let's see. Darren says, a little thing I did to boost sales is paying up for items that, flip. oh yeah, graphing calculator, things that flip, quickly flip, yeah, that's true. Um, Julie says, I routinely have 45 items listed at one time and do one to two sales a day. But do you list pretty, I mean, maybe it's just me, I don't know, maybe I just have a, a bunch of junk. Do you, I mean, but you list pretty regularly, right, Julie? You think that would, I don't know, maybe they didn't, have, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, King flip. Garage sales are probably better than thrifting if you want to keep small, super small inventory. Yeah, I love garage sales. If the weather's been so bad here. They, my garage sale, like the last three or four weekends, has been horrible, horrible. Julie, I'm really curious to know if you if you list pretty regularly because that's good. That would be good to know. Like if you have 45 items and you just and you still have one to two sales a day, that's that's really good. Um, let's see. Crafty caregiver, I uh, was listening in the car now home so I can listen and pay attention to the chat. Yay, hello. And Darren says, Margaret, I want more kitty videos. Let me tell you about these kitties. The, I want more kitty videos too. My kitties are in isolation right now because we've been fighting this ringworm. I'm not sure if you know. But this is hopefully the last week. Um, those kittens came and we didn't know they had ringworm and then it ended up having ringworm. And I've talked about this on a couple of my reset, hitting the reset button videos. Oh my gosh, everybody got ringworm the big kitties, everybody in the house. So for the last four weeks, the cats have been, the big kitties are in the office, the little kitties are in our bathroom, and we are, they're getting dipped once a week. They got their dip yesterday in this lime dip. And yesterday they took a culture. So I can't wait for them to get out so I can make more kitten videos. I have some footage. That's another thing to answer Caroline's question from before, how I take video of everything. You know, I'm recording all the time. So I, yeah. I usually have plenty of footage to make videos just hanging out on my computer. Let's see. Um, Darren says, question. Margaret, do you use stock photos in your listing? No. I mean, at, if I'm listing something and eBay suggests a stock photo, like it's a brand new item, I might use it. Um, but I always have my own video, my own photos too. Yeah. 
crafty caregiver, I took a list from Prof Sales, list 10 items plus my sales from the day before. Sales are averaging 200 per day. Whoa, how are you gonna? Okay, sales in, in numbers or sales in profit? That's a lot, because I can't imagine listen, listing 210 items in a day. I'm guessing profit, because otherwise. Ah, that, that's a challenge, though. I mean, but that for sure would get you sales. That we, we, we did a numbers challenge one week in iLot, and we had to list, you know, so many items each day. And I, my goal that week or something was 100. I was going to list 100 items in a week. I didn't make it. Um, but I got up to 87, but boy, my sales were hot. I mean, they were jumping. All right, let's see. Uh, Julie says, I work outside the home and only want to deal with a low inventory list, about 50 items a month. Okay. But I, yeah, I haven't, good, crafty character or profit. Whew, it's like, man, you're a machine. Um, I forget what I was saying now. Yeah, but then also, I have not been listing very much lately. The summertime has just thrown everything for a loop and got sick. And I have all these excuses. They're wonderful. You know, I did some listing yesterday, so woo, yay. Um, and King Flip says lime dip sounds wonderful. It does. It's, it's sulfurous. Let's just put it that way. Smells like rotten eggs, but I don't care. It's going to kill that ringworm. And we had the Stanley Steamer people come in. We got all the floor steamed because I'm not having this anymore. No, no, this has been horrible. Okay, now where are we at? Okay, little things and more. Says nice sales. I do the same when I cannot find something. I will list it for a crazy price and see what happens. I'm not sure if I missed it, but do you sell your shirts you create on Amazon Merch? Oh, okay, this is the one where I was talking about cat, how I, on Amazon FBA, I feel like I'm a catfish because I don't do RA where I go out and source like that, but I find things at garage sales and thrift stores. I'm like the bottom of the bottom feeder. <laughs> Sounds bad. I'm like the bottom feeder for Amazon FBA. And so I made this catfish shirt um, and it's got like this little cat. My son's actually wearing it today. Hey, Mikey, bring me your shirt, but put it in my hand. <laughs> so I made this shirt um, and put a catfish on it. And then I, show, I showed the design. There it is. <laughs> he actually is wearing it today. Here it is. So I made this little shirt. And so she says, oh, that's cute. Did you, do you sell your designs? Here you go. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> so yeah, I do. I have a merch account. And that's actually the last few days also... <clears throat> as I've been sick, I've really been uploading a lot of designs for merch. I finally, I just got um, approved last week um, to bump up to the 500 tier. How it works is you can, when you start off selling, do you guys know what merch is? Maybe I should tell you that first. So Merch by Amazon is um, a place where you can upload designs to have shirts made. You don't have to put any money into it at all except for the designs that you create and then you upload them and then they're, they're sort of print on demand type of shirt. So I was <clears throat> approved for that and you can apply um, to be approved for that, but it takes months to get approved. So my husband had applied like two weeks ago and he's like, I still haven't gotten an email from them. I'm like, just hold your horses, dude. Um, so, so yeah, um, so I, I had, once you sell, you they set you up and you get 25 designs to upload. Once you sell 25 shirts, then they'll approve you to sell 100 shirts. You know, then you can have, upload 100 shirts. Once you sell 100 shirts, then they bump you up to the $500 level. So I'm, that's where I am now, with the 500 shirt, 500 designs. That's what I mean. So I'm still trying to plug in all those 500 designs because then once you have it set up, it's like I, I tell my husband, it's like free money, you know, because a lot of people use Fiverr and pay for designs. And I've done a couple of those, but I wasn't really happy with what I got. I know Glenn Zubia is really good. Um, he's, I don't think he's on Fiverr, but he's in the green room. Um, and there's some other people, but yeah, it is, it is invitation at the moment. And it was invitation when I did it too. I just, you know, I put that in to, to get, to get invited. And I waited and it did take a month or two for me to get, to get in, but it's been so worth it. I mean, it's just another stream of income that now, you know, when I first started, it was like extra 20 bucks a month and then 40 bucks a month. And, you know, slowly it's been building. And so now I'm like, I see some of these crazy numbers. People are bringing in like thousand dollars a month. I'm like, that sounds awesome. I want that. And I want you to have that too. So go to go apply to get an invitation for merch. Yeah, it's, it's totally worth it. So this week, you know, I've been sick. I'm just sitting in my recliner being sick, like making shirt designs, uploading them and not you know, doing a whole lot with my eBay listings. But I feel like once I get that in there, then it's just there. I don't have to do anything with it. It's there. And 
you know, if, unless I like, oh, I need to, you know, here's another design. Let me take one down and put up another one. So, wow, this just turned into merch. Uh oh, let me grab my charger. We're in the red. Let me plug you in real quick. Okay. Here we go. So, let me check the chat real quick before I move on because there's been a little bit of chitter chatter over there. Uh oh, what happened? Everything okay? It's not moving. Why isn't it moving? Oh, okay. Here we go. Woo! Okay. Lime dip. Okay, that's where we stopped. So, Darren Eckelman says, How many platforms are you selling on? Let's see. I sell on eBay, Etsy, Amazon FBA. Um, I don't know if you count merch. I'm just going to tell you like all my income streams. How about that? Um, Amazon FBA. I have um, my merch account. I do a local garage sale site called Garage Sale. And not, not a lot comes from that. It just kind of depends. And I get a little bit from YouTube, but we've talked about YouTube money. And then I do I have I get a little bit from affiliate links. So those links like you see down in the bottom or in the description, those are called affiliate links. And basically it's just like a finder's fee. So if you go click on that and you buy something from my affiliate link, then it's very minuscule, but if I figure, you know, it all rolls up. It might be a quarter. You know, for a $30 item, I might get a quarter for it, but then if somebody else gets it, it's another quarter, and the next thing you know, I can go down to Sonic and buy a corn dog. you know? <laughs> so I'll take it. I will take it. <laughs> okay, next. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Julie took the, took the shirt off his back. I sure did. Yeah, get on. I mean, just it doesn't hurt to try for merch, even if you get 25 designs up there. I mean, this is what I tell my husband. So my affiliate links, maybe one month it's like $30, or maybe I think one month it was like $24. I said, you know what? I don't I mean, to me, I'm happy. $24, that's, you know, I can put some gas in my car. Every little bit helps, and it all rolls up into, you know, making life easier for the family. Let's see. Um... Terry H says, I appreciate your videos and sharing all. Oh, thank you. Um, uh oh, uh oh, it jumped. I missed, I missed a question. Okay, okay. Slow, slow, slow. Go back. Sorry. It's taking me a second. Uh, Thrifty, that's a good concept. What's your average profit on the eye? Oh, oh, he's talking about the low inventory um, for Julie. Yeah, Heather, it marches invitation only at the moment. So, but yeah, put your email in there. I mean, it's going to, you're going to have a wait, but once you're in, it's worth it. You know, it's, it's worth it. I ordered another design. I can't wait from King Flip. Oh, King Flip, do you, do you do merch? Do you use Fiverr? Let's see. Dee's waiting on for merch. Crafty Caregiver, Etsy's my only site and it's slow at the moment. Two items sold this week. Yeah. I mean, you might consider cross posting on eBay. I do. I like it. <laughs> Have I ordered from Teespring? No, I haven't. <clears throat> and how much do I charge for my shirts? <clears throat> when I first started, when I was in the $25 and some of my $100 ones, I did them kind of cheap, $16.99, $17.99, because I wanted those sales so I could move up to the next level. Um, now most of my shirts, they are between, they're $17.99 to $19.99, and they've, they've been doing pretty, pretty well, I think. I mean, yeah, I compare myself to some of these sellers that are selling the huge amounts so compared to them no but for me I'm happy you know <laughs> uh, Amazon has a fixed price okay ah the thing jumped again okay hang on my chat like I'll start scrolling and then woo it jumps uh, Amazon has a fixed price I'm not sure what that means for the shirts you mean like on Amazon you can choose your price so you know let's say I was gonna fundraise for the Boy Scouts and I, and I can create a private link. I can create a shirt just for them. I can make the shirts $9.99 and make nothing on it, you know, or $14.99, make a dime or something. I don't know. Um, let's see. Could you sell your most popular designs on Etsy? No, because um, as far as the shirts go, no. And the reason is that it's a print-on-design type of deal. So I don't print the shirts. I don't do anything. I mean... I guess if I was going to make like a digital download, I could, but, but no. Mine don't. Yeah, you can change the price. Yeah. Let's see. Darren says, with your husband's background in computer design, will you two make your own seller's platform? No. <laughs> he, he's really good, though. I mean, but he's actually, he worked on an app for me to help me with my inventory. And he never finished it because by the time he got to where he was, getting it you know where he wanted it 
I was like, oh, I don't do it that way anymore. You know, but he, he, and there's like apps that are do similar things. So I was like, I don't want him spinning his wheels. Um, but he has created a couple shirt designs for me. So that was, that's good. Um, have I heard of offer? I have heard of offer up, but I have not, um, I haven't used it yet. Let's see. Not so perfectly me. Five miles and offer up have been slow for me lately. Penny Adams says, hi, Margaret, back in your cage. My grandson noticed that you're in your cage again. This is true. I'm in my cage again. My, I have my table and everything set up in the workroom, but since all the craziness with the cats and then the Stanley steamers coming, my workroom has turned into like a big again. So I can't, I can't do it. Um, let's see. Treasure Peak says, what do you use to create your designs for merch? Photoshop. I don't, I don't know how to use Photoshop. I use PicMonkey. And I, and I do a video on everything. I know I feel so silly, like, I made a video on it. So I do, I have a video about how I create my designs using PicMonkey. Yeah, um, maybe the apps will warm up. And then, oh gosh, it jumps again, sorry y'all. Okay, okay, it's going fast. Do we have a lot of people watching? Hey, 50 viewers, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's see, I'm looking over here. Cross post on eBay and Etsy definitely helps, yes. Anyone sell handmade good on, goods on, on eBay? No, I have never I have never tried that. Not that I've handmade myself. Um, yeah, it's worth a try though, Heather. Try selling it. Da, 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 da. Hang on. Boys? Guys, is it time to stop? Hey, Tanya. Okay, we'll do a couple more. I think the, the natives are getting restless and I gotta start dinner. Wow, it's already been that long. Okay, oopsies. Maybe we ought to end there. Let's see what the, the next video. Oh, okay. Next video is from Julie. He, Thrifty Paper Garden asks, let's see. Thank you for this video. I do not ship many breakable items. I did ship a drinking, um, four 16-ounce drinking glasses. Pack them carefully in a box made for fragile items. One glass to crack. Customer was understanding. Sent me a, a picture of the breakage. I refunded him, and USPS was quick to respond with a refund. I'm leery to ship fragile items unless it's a great item. Have you ever had to file a claim? Yes. Could you present a video about the USPS insurance process? Um, yeah, I will. And I think, I'm gonna double check because I think Jason T. Smith just did something with his mom about that. Um, I saw the name of the video, I didn't watch it. Shame on me, he's gonna get me later. But I was, yeah, I can do that for sure. Um, I, oh, I would screen share, but I don't have anything to pull up to show you. Maybe I should. Should I just do it? Let me just do it real quick. USPS. Um, boo. Here, I'm going to just show you real fast. And then maybe I'll make a video. I just want to make sure did his video, you know, did he do the same thing? Because then maybe he'll get me if I, <laughs> I just did a video about that. No, he's not like that. Okay, so here's the USPS site. Can you see that? And then I'll come over here and I'll click file a claim. I'll type it in because they do make it kind of hard to. So then they have all of these, like here's all this stuff. So here, file a claim. They tell you all of this doodad stuff, find missing mail, you just have to scroll down. Just keep scrolling, and here it is. Look how hard that was. Because they, they kind of hide it, right? Until you know, hang on. Actually, Jason did it and it was good. Okay, good. So then there you go. So here's current claims, save claims. And then start a new claim. So here you go, right there. Okay, good. I'm glad Jason did it. <laughs> Let me close this out. Okay. <laughs> okay, so maybe I'll make one later. Maybe not. <clears throat> um, let's see. Does anyone know what the flat rate is on shipping shoes with USPS? I don't know. I, I mean, they have that shoe box, but it's not a flat rate shoe box size. So that's, it just kind of depends on the shoe weight. Unless you're using a specific like medium flat rate or large flat rate kind of deal. Okay, I think that's gonna be it. Oh gosh, I got the spinning ball of death. Okay, good, 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 it stopped. All right, thank you so much everybody for coming over. Ship shoes and padded flat rate envelope. Okay, I've never done that. So thanks for coming over, you guys. Um, I've, I've got a lot more Ida, you know, Q and A questions. So if you have any more questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. If you're watching this later, thank you so much for coming by. And I know some people get frustrated when I'm talking to people in the chat and you can't see what's going on, but it, it's just, it happens. All right, so if you would, please 50 people hit that like button or the dislike button because it helps. 
and not with money, but just with people finding me. And then, yeah, so enjoy the rest of your day, you guys. I'm going to go make dinner for my family, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.